I, I don't resonate with it because Waldo in the books, he's really hard to find. So he like stands out, he's unique. But if everyone looks at like, where's Waldo? Like that makes him not unique. So that's where it doesn't resonate with me. Exactly. You got it. That's why he's not so unique. So AI is making everyone marketing. Imagine marketing. Oh, you're, you're saying everyone looks like Waldo now. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. That's got what it, I'm saying. It, that's a really good way to pitch, by the way. It's you demo whoever you're targeting in real time. It shows that you've done the work and you've personalized it for them. When you look at like open AI, right? They're like, yeah, AI should be regulated. It's really what's happening is like potentially Sam Altman might be pulling the ladder up as he go as he climbs the ladder, right? So regulation protects him. Most people believe that a recession is coming. You have all these smart people on stage. It doesn't matter if it's Bill Gurley, Ray Dalio, Vinod Kosla, whatever. People think rough seas are ahead. All right, so we are going to talk about our experience speaking at HubSpot's inbound conference. So Neil, do you want to elaborate on what the inbound conference is? HubSpot every year throws an inbound marketing conference where people talk about the latest marketing strategies from AI, paid media, SEO, social media, how to convert visitors into customers. They pretty much talk about anything digital marketing related. It's a big event. I think there was over 10,000 attendees this 12, year. 12,000 this year. Yeah, so it's quite a bit. Uh, a lot of great keynote speakers, Derek Jeter, Reese Witherspoon. So they had a really all-star lineup. Andrew Huberman, the doctor. Yeah, that's right. Andrew Huberman. Eric and I both spoke. We did a podcast uh, episode that was fun. And yeah, overall, it was a good event. We've been there two years in a row now. And the latest thing that we're seeing, which a lot of conferences are talking about, which is AI, but at HubSpot, and we don't mean this in a bad way, there's just a lot of SMB and mid-market businesses. A lot, the big trend was everyone's trying to figure out how to leverage AI and not hire as many marketers from at least the people I talk to. They're like, how can we automate as much as possible where we don't need humans? And funny enough, my talk was the opposite on which how to thrive when everyone's using AI and how to win. Because the problem is when everyone's using AI, we all start sounding the same because we're using the same technology to create similar types of content. They'll sound the same. I always use the analogy. I know Eric doesn't like this one. The where's Waldo (laughs) analogy in which everyone looks like Waldo. Being unique actually makes you stand out versus being red and white striped t-shirt. And AI is making it where everyone's looking like they're in a red and white striped t-shirt. You know why I don't like that analogy, Neil? It's not that I don't like it. I don't resonate with it because Waldo in the books, is it's he's really hard to find. So he like stands out. He's unique, right? But if everyone looks at like, where, where's Waldo? Like that makes him not unique. So that's where it doesn't resonate with me. Exactly. You got it. That's why he's not so unique. So AI is making everyone marketing. Imagine marketing. Oh, you're, you're saying everyone looks like Waldo now. That's what you're saying. Yes, okay. that's got what it, I'm it, saying. It, so like in my presentation, I show an image of how Waldo used to just be one person he's hard to find. And now an image of everyone is pretty much Waldo. That works a lot better because the way you told me, I never saw you like visualize it. So now that you've explained it, that it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the issue because we're all using AI or you and I not as much for content creation and things like that. But yeah, it's, and it's not perfect either. The content is just terrible. It's nowhere near the quality if you compare to hiring a really amazing writer. By the way, speaking of quality, I apologize in advance for Neil's mic because he just moved. So our, our sound quality is going to be a little off for the next couple of rounds, but it's okay, everyone. We still got to record. And so here's the other thing. When we spoke, so Neil had a main stage talk and I actually checked today. I, I spoke to the HubSpot team. The main stage has 9,000 seats. I don't know if you know that. And I think you, yeah. Did it look like 9,000 people? Okay, so I don't know. Maybe I, I could be off, right? Because 9,000 seems like a lot, especially if it's 12,000 people that went. So it could be off by maybe like double or something like that. It could be 4,500, could be 22,000 or something like that. She's the individual that I spoke to. She said the side stage is like the development stage, which we're, which is where we did the podcast, maybe 1,000 people or so. So maybe, I think maybe it's like closer to four or 500 or so. But the main thing is our thing was packed and I'm, I'm grateful for all of you that listen. We're going to try to get the audio and the video files to upload here. I actually asked for them today and also some pictures too. So we can uh, show to our moms that what we do is legit with the podcast stuff. Aside from that, Neil and I both did a little session with Chris from Wistia, the, the founder and CEO of Wistia. And we had a dinner with him as well with another creator named uh, Jay Klaus. And we're going to talk about what we talked about at dinner later, but it's just, this is one of those opportunities when you go to a big event, 
to be able to connect with people that you haven't seen for years. In, in, in this case, Chris and I have known each other online, maybe for 10 years or so. I just never met him in person. And so to be able to have those connections, Neil and I get some FaceTime as well, even though now we live close to each other. So there's probably a lot more FaceTime there. But what we also learned too, is that sure, people are interested in AI, but at the end of the day, when Neil and I came off of stage and I don't know what conversations you had, maybe you can share it, Neil, but people came up to me afterwards asking about, Hey, I'm interested. I'm a marketer, but I'm interested in mergers and acquisitions. Hey, I'm interested in, in, Oh, I, we built this AI tool and we want you to check it out. And someone showed us an AI tool that they built that automatically captioned our talk. Literally she did it real time. And that was pretty cool. I think the tool is called peach.ai. So P E C H dot AI. I could be wrong peach-ai.com. It was a really cool tool. She was going to give us a demo of it. I haven't had a chance to take her up on the demo, but from what I saw in person, it was a really cool tool and we actually should start using it. Yep. And we, we, it's, it's cause we talked about another tool on stage and then she brought up, she brought up her tool and I, that's a really good way to pitch by the way. It's like you demo whoever you're targeting in real time. It shows that you've done the work and you've personalized it for them, which is like no different than any type any form of sales. It's sales 101. So look, we think HubSpot's a, a great event and we hope to do more things with them. And I think it's just, it's one of the marquee marketing events of the year. All right. So we're going to talk about what I learned from the all in summit that happened recently. So Neil, I'm going to flip it to you. Yeah. So I'm curious on one, what do they talk about from the all in summit? Cause I wasn't there. Uh, two, what were most of the attendees looking to get? If you go to inbound or you listen to this podcast, it's going to be about marketing. So what are they really discussing? But those are the two main questions. And three, I know the ticket prices were really expensive. Was the networking amazing? Yeah. Okay. So I'll start with a networking piece. So basically 1800 people attended and a thousand people paid $7,500 for the VIP ticket. So that's already seven and a half million dollars. And then you have the rest of the people that paid anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to $1,500 or so from my understanding. And so, cause there's like students and things like that. And it's because they, they hosted at the UCLA campus. And that, that's one thing I want to share with everyone. From my understanding, if you host an event at a university, it is potentially a lot cheaper than hosting at a nice hotel. And so we might, by the way, hit me on, on, on Twitter, if you're interested in this, but Neil and I are considering potentially doing a marketing school live event, maybe at a USC or UCLA or something like that. And hit me up if that's something that you're interested in, because I think it's now that we're both back in LA, it's something that's worth doing. And plus we have a cool team that can handle it. Shout out to Evolve Events Group. The, so th that's the first piece, right? That's the total amount of, of people that attended. And also on the networking, to answer your question on networking, it was a really high quality group of people. So for example, I saw my buddy Jock, who I hadn't seen in a while. And I saw this other, he's doing like a handful of things. He has like a couple businesses and Mark Manson, the author of the subtle art of not giving a F and he wrote Will Smith's book. And so we, the three of us actually went on like a mandate. It was at the Santa Monica pier and we got on the, <laughs> we got on a Ferris wheel and we went around and around. We got on a roller coaster afterwards as well. So it was very romantic, but. The networking was good because I got to hang out with a lot of people, old friends, and I met some new friends as well. People that have, I met a guy, he has like a business that does 15, $20 million a year and he's just been doing it for a while. And a lot of these people are really humble. And so I would say the quality of the people is pretty high, but I think you, you get a, it's an interesting mix of people. Cause I, I was talking to a friend about it and the interesting thing is like when you go to, let's say you go to uh, trafficking conversion summit, right? It's all marketers. If you go to affiliate world, like it's all affiliate marketers, this event is just really all people that are interested in tech. And so it's a very wide group of people. You have entrepreneurs, you have investors, you have people that work at tech companies, right? So you don't know what you're going to get, but that's maybe what makes it cool. Now, in terms of the topics. I will say you should definitely check out the Bill Gurley talk on YouTube when they release it. Bill Gurley by far. So he's with Benchmark and he's like a well-known investor. And he was just talking about how regulation is really for the incumbents, but he made it a really entertaining talk. Elon Musk dialed in, but he dialed in from a private jet. So he did a Zoom call from his private jet on Starlink and it was pretty cool. Mr. B spoke, Toby from Shopify spoke as well. And Brian Armstrong from Coinbase. And Everyone's just talking about how it's important to stay disciplined and focused right now. And that's just been the, the general theme. And they had really interesting parties each night. The first night was like 007. Everyone had to wear like tuxedos or dresses and all that. Second night was like a Barbie themed event. And third night was a cyberpunk thing. So I'll pause for a second to let you follow up with any other questions. So if, if you had to give me your five biggest takeaways from the event, what would they be? Man, that's a lot. So my, my first takeaway would be, 
one, if you're thinking about hosting an event, maybe look at a university because it might be significantly cheaper. Second one is on the Bill Gurley piece. It's if you look at, when you look at like open AI, right? They're like, yeah, AI should be regulated. It's really what's happening is like, potentially Sam Altman might be pulling the ladder up as he go as he climbs the ladder, right? So regulation protects him. It really protects the incumbents, right? So that's the second thing that, that I mentioned. The third thing that I learned was that if you're going to do VIP, you should really just make it a VIP thing. So th really these are learnings because I do events, right? VIP should really just be for like, I don't know, maybe 10% of people, 20% of people or so, and it should feel like a VIP experience. And I think that's where they missed the mark. So that would be the, the third thing. So if you're going to do a VIP thing for $7,500, a dinner shouldn't just be, you get let in an hour early and you can eat like the, you can eat like the taco trucks or whatever, right? It should be like a sit down dinner where you're meeting interesting people. So the dinner wasn't like sit down. It was no. like taco trucks and stuff. Correct. And it's just the networking. It wasn't intentional. The fourth thing is there's an app that they had called iConnections. And it's, I think it's a really great event app. There's just a lot of stuff that you can do in it. You can message people, you can scan each other's badges and things like that. So I, I found a new app that, that that's interesting. And let me think about this. The fifth one would be, I'm trying to go through all the speakers. One this thing that you ended up getting as a fifth one what was the biggest, biggest business takeaway. Biggest that most people can apply, right? The regulation one, it's great, but most people aren't as Okay. So Ray Dalio had a talk. So Ray Dalio, I think was the, the first interview that they did. And so for him, he still thinks he shared a new video on principles that he has. I recommend you all go check it out and basically talking about how there's always a changing new world order and all that. And he does believe a recession is still very imminent. And that was the theme. Like most people believe that a recession is coming. Like you have all these smart people on stage. It doesn't matter if it's Bill Gurley, Ray Dalio, Vinod Kosla, whatever. People think rough seas are ahead. And he's Much more he's rough than we're in right now or. Yeah. yeah. So they don't think we're in the rough seas yet. They think we're in the rough seas, but it's going to get rougher. Yeah. Got and it. It's like prepare. So they're all saying it's going to get much harder than it is right now. That's the sentiment. I got it. Yep. That's interesting. Yep. So look, that's, those are the takeaways I had. I think the way they handled the event mo for the most part was really good. You know what I would say is say too, like Jason Calacanis, he was around like before the first talk started, he started going around and said, who wants a selfie? Who wants a selfie? He's hyping everyone up. And I think if you're going to host the event, like he, him out of all four of the besties, he was out there like talking to everyone and he wasn't acting like he was better than anyone. He was just like having a good time. And I thought that was that there's no takeaway there. I just thought that was, that was really nice of him. Cool. So, yeah. yeah, that's nice of him. All right. So that is it for today. All in summit didn't pay me to say this. It's a great podcast, great event overall. And I think the one final thing I'll add in is like a lot of the attendees were very much speaker caliber people like a Mark Manson and very influential people in, in the crowd. And I think that says a lot when you host an event. So that is it for today. Please don't forget to rate, view, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow.